All right, welcome back to episode 13 of the Parts and uh, Pistons podcast. Lucky number 13. Lucky number 13 indeed. So uh, maybe you should, uh, your, your new number for racing should be uh, 13 now. Well, I haven't put a new number on the car yet, so I still got Oh, chance. there we go. There we maybe go. maybe 13 is going to be your lucky number this year. Let's uh, welcome Cody, uh, or also known as Cody on Cars, I guess, yeah. right? Um, and we'll have his whole YouTube and everything linked just down below. Um, he is on our podcast as he is one of my Miata friends. That's right. <laughs> I got as many Miata friends as I can. There's not many of us out there. Uh, really? I feel like there is. Man, whenever I'm cruising around, like I haven't hung out with a Miata friend in like months. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, well we're hanging out today. There we so. go. We're doing the podcast and hanging out today, so that should that should fare quite well. Um, and Cody has actually had quite an interesting car history, mm. um, which is f- kind of funny because I would say it's somewhat similar to mine, but different as well, which I find funny. Same, different. All right. Yes. Um, so I met Cody back at the LZ event uh, when yeah. he was in Toronto, and uh, I was I think I mentioned to a mutual who was our mutual friend that day. Oh my God. I know I can picture his Instagram and what he looks like. I can't remember his name. Oh, frick. Oh, I'm killing it right now. I was, I was with Canary that whole day. Yeah. Um, a, a, like, uh, Bo- Booseberry, like he used to, he used to have the Focus, uh, ST. And then I, it was one of his friends and then we approached you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and I started speaking to, to Cody and we started talking about my car. I was like, oh yeah, I have a, a TDI with a CR170. He's like, oh, I had one of those swapped into my, uh, my Golf. Yeah. And uh, that's when I was like, hey, this dude's cool. <laughs> so, and then he's like, oh, I have a Miata as well. Like, let's go see it. And that's when you had your uh, orange Miata. Yeah, that rust bucket. That was a, that was a fun car. Yeah. So maybe maybe what we'll we'll get into is kind of your car history because I wanted to talk about some of the cool cars you've had. Um, and then I also thought we would kind of go into the topic of the actual uh, Miata and why you decided to do uh, basically a heart transplant, a shell transplant in a Miata. Um, and maybe we can dive off from there. So I don't know, maybe start off with the first cool car you think you had and uh, we'll go from there. I'll start my, my history off here in Ontario because before I moved out from Newfoundland, I was young enough to where I was still really broke. Uh huh. So I didn't have any like really cool cars Okay. in Newfoundland. So I'd say the, I've had so much different stuff. Like the first really memorable car I bought out here was a 97 E36. Oh, E36, yeah. eh? Okay, okay. That was one of the nicest driving cars I've had. Like, just whatever BMW figured out at that point for those cars to engineer it that way, it yes. drove so good. What an experience. Yeah, E36 is, uh, it's funny enough, damn, I bet Tony's like uh, kicking himself because he had an E36 and oh. he absolutely loved it. Yeah. And he's like, oh no, just do this podcast yourself, guys. He's going to be rewatching this being like, oh, I could have brought in my E36 uh, oh, knowledge. Damn. But yeah, what what E36 did you have? A sedan coupe? Uh... Uh, I had the sedan. Is that 328i? Oh, yes. I yes. guess it would be the trim. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And and what's cool, like not to interrupt your, your story, is in North America, it the difference between a 328 and an M3 wasn't that massive, like engine performance wise, hmm. because of a lot of the differences were chassis things, like like different suspension setups, this, this, that, that. Because the, I'm pretty sure the horsepower difference in North America or or for the USDM car was extremely nerfed, where it was I only about like 40 horsepower or something still. That's yeah, and but we go to Europe and it's like 68 horsepower yeah. difference, right? And you're robbed of that 28 horsepower, and that does make a difference. I thought like to the wheels, it was it was basically 30 horsepower difference. Yeah. Which, if you think about it, that's not a big amount. I mean, a car that's like as light as they are, they're pretty light for today's standards. Yeah. Every bit counts for those. Exactly. But for the price difference of what a 328 versus an M3 was, yeah. that's where you think about, is that 30 horsepower worth it? Is it worth spending those couple extra grand for for you know that price for that horsepower difference and that's where it's kind of questionable so at least uh you know i'm a i'm a big sedan guy uh, yeah. i've mentioned this before yep. and uh the e36 in a sedan looks beautiful i actually have a poster of a e36 sedan m3 in my in my closet so i can only uh, every time i think of a of a m3 sedan for the e36 i always think of super speeders rob 
yes and his giveaway car that i did that he did, yeah, yeah 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 and it was like the the um, like um ltw or whatever the special edition he basically converted it to yeah. with the with the yeah, like the flag the yes M3 flag down his like i don't know bmw stuff too well you know i'm a i'm a big beamer fanatic <laughs> so no but that's 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 cool it's a fun first car manual i guess or yeah. or okay sweet i didn't so. my mechanical ability is not great now but it was significantly less back then yes so even if like a radiator went which it did uh, that would basically cripple me because I'm just like, I don't know what to do. This is my only car. I need to get yeah. to work. So I'd have to like pay to get it fixed. Yeah, and it was not cheap because not everyone wanted to touch BMWs. Yeah, and I was getting, uh, I had a Mark IV TDI. Yes. And I was like, well, there's a place called BMW Heaven or something like that. It's it's a place. Beamer where, Heaven, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, almost like DAS parts, I guess, where they just... yes. Yeah, they part out cars exactly. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, and so I was like, "Well, surely the parts got to be about the same cost and just as easy to get." No, they weren't. No, they were still <laughs> way more expensive. And I was like, "I just, I can't afford this, man. I'm not making that much money right now." No, no, no. But that the, you're still referring to the E36 parts, correct? E36, yeah, yeah. Because because I bet when you moved into that Mark IV, the price of parts, uh, yeah, it dropped down very quickly. Yeah, and... so I moved out here with a Mark IV TDI, ah. and then. Uh, I, I was like, I want a BMW. This is going to be great. Yeah. I bought this thing and then I went back to a Mark IV TDI and I was like, <laughs> I'm just going to stick where I kind of am familiar with things and parts are cheap. Yeah. And you know what? You like, as much as people like to say, oh, they're, they're, they're older, they're smelly, they're this, they're slow. You can't beat a 1.9 PD, man. Like, like uh, a pump deuce diesel is so efficient and reliable that it's, it's silly, right? And most of them, I think the biggest thing that got to them was rust, right? Yeah. Yeah. And well, I guess with your generation, yours is not common rail, right? Mine's common rail. Yours Mine's common CR. Rail? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So like before yours, I guess, before they went to common rail, you had the cam issues and then the Passats had those. But yes. I was mostly with the ALH. Yes. And yeah, then yeah, yeah. I had a PD Mark IV very briefly. I had a really clean Golf that was like yeah. sprayed, like a Camaro Red or something like that. Anyway, it was a nice PD, but I didn't drive it that much, so I just modified the heck out of a out of an ALH. <laughs> well, ALH is still a pump deuced, right? It's just the the engine codes were a little bit different. Uh, what does a pump deuce even mean? It's like a mechanical. Like so, yeah, yeah, yeah. A pump deuce is basically the injection system where the common rail has a common rail injection system. The pump deuce injection system is the older generation. So ALH, BHW, BW, mm. they were all PDs. Uh, pump deuced right. diesels yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. so um the full engineering breakdown you know what who would be great for that either greg pona or alex pona so if anyone wants to hear a topic on the differences of pds and crs um i gotta i gotta call one of you back yeah we, we need a pona back here don't get your information from this guy <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> um so yeah so e36 and then what did you move on to oh man Oh, I've had so many cars since I've been here. I bought a couple air-cooled Beetles for a little bit. Oh. But you probably want to hear about the Mark V, uh, basically a GTD that I had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you, So let's go with that. Let's, let's, let's hear that story. So my buddy, uh, Christian, who owns and operates Dominate Performance, uh, he built more or less as close as he possibly could uh, an American Golf GTD, which is a... Volkswagen Golf GTI of the Mark V with a TDI in it. So uh, he bought a completely destroyed sedan TDI that was rear-ended. He pretty well like mated the wiring harnesses on his bed like before he even had a shop, like custom made all the wiring, all that kind of stuff, swapped it over, made it super clean after a while, and that thing rocked at a CR170 turbo and uh, better clutch and and like a tune it was it kicked ass it was good a hundred percent hundred percent and and uh it was a manual or was it a oh, yeah it was manual it was a manual so yeah well i guess the manuals didn't come with uh lsds did they unless i think so unless this he paired it with like a it. gti trans did yeah. he that's a great question because it's been with the gti trans i've never had any issues with it slipping in terms of like skipping one wheel yeah but, so uh, so likely or you could have swapped one in for all we know but i yeah. guess christian mr dominate is the only person actually um talking about mr dominate i'm i'm friends with his uh, i'm really good friends with his brother-in-law oh no way yeah 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 and uh my one of my good buddies josh he's uh, a little camera shy he won't come on the podcast yeah. josh uh stacy he's a very cool guy he has a he has a supercharged um he has a supercharged tacoma 
Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, got a, that's got a scoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Before that, he had a bad motorcycle accident, but yep. before that, he drove uh, a supercharged CRX. Huh. So big Honda guy. Similar big to Honda the guy. Uh, to the guy who I bought my orange meat off of. Really? Huge in the motorcycles and such, and I think he had a pretty bad accident, and he was like up in a hospital hospital bed, broke a lot of bones. Yeah, that was Josh. He had, he had it uh, a little bit tough, so... Maybe I'll convince Josh one day to come on a podcast, but doubt it. So, um, okay, so you had that that Mark V, and yeah. then and then uh, what? What? Why the heck did you sell that? I, I don't know. So it was fully resprayed before I got it. Not not too long before I got it. So it was this responsibility weighing over my head. Like I need to keep this car really clean. Yes. And like I you know I don't want it to get scratched or dented. If I, if a rock chip happens, it's because of me on the highway. I understand cars are meant to be driven and, yeah. and such, but like to get parts repainted is expensive. So uh, and then the car was already set up almost perfectly. Like it was the perfect daily driver. It had like coilovers and brakes and such on it. Like it was just set up really nicely and I felt like I couldn't really make the car my own. Yeah, I feel you on that. And then I regretted selling it afterwards because I sold it to some sketchy dude who then sold it after a while. I don't know where the car is. I'm usually pretty good at keeping up the date on where my older cars are. Yeah. I don't know. The car could be in a scrapyard for all I know. Like it was the it was one of the cleanest Mark V GTIs around. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. See, I'm in that same boat, but I took those protective measures because i like my car is very similar to that uh, G gti that was gtd swapped and i have a, basically a full gtd conversion on my tdi mm. um and i got it basically fully resprayed because of the vw factory warranty for mm -hmm. the rust yep um so what i did is i plastic up the car yeah and then after the plastic dip i wrapped the car and then I drove it around literally two weeks unwrapped, right? And people were like, wow, this paint is incredible. And I'm like, yeah, it was painted like five, six years ago. They were like, holy crap, how do you... I'm like, <laughs> it was wrapped. It was like, I'm cheating, right? And now the car's wrapped again. Yeah. Because uh, that's my analogy. Like, I have 373,000 kilometers yep. on that TDI. And I think when you saw it, you thought... I think your guess was like 150,000 kilometers when you saw low. it. I'm like, yeah, this thing looks pretty clean. <laughs> and then you saw the mileage and you're like... What? I was like, yeah, I drive the I drive it everywhere. And and I guess I'm kind of cheating in that way, but it's not cheating, I'm protecting it and it still looks good. Yeah. Uh by keeping it wrapped and uh the paint underneath stays uh, meticulous, which is which is a big thing. I'd never say like wrapping is cheating unless you're trying to put wrap off as paint. Like wrap is is it does its own thing yeah. and paint does its own thing. It's like driving static and slammed if you want that that's your thing. Yeah. If you want to drive on air, go nuts, man. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just the, the comment on that is uh, I, on the TDI on my Jetta, I went with Inozotech. Okay. Uh, super, uh, like it's, it was called uh, Super Gloss or whatever. Yep. Um, that gets mistaken for paint a lot. All right. But at the cost of the material, $2,500 for just the material, yep. you better expect it. It better look like almost paint at that point, right? Yeah. Because you get a roll of Vivid for $400 and you, or you can get a roll of Inozotech for two and a half. Yep. You better get what you pay for there. You get that vivid right? roll for four hundred bucks. You're going to see some vivid imperfections. A hundred percent. Well, <laughs> frick, my it used my I used to have vivid. My rally art is in in vivid, and yeah, you can you can definitely tell the difference. Yeah. So, yeah, and then after the Mark V, what did you have? I'm waiting for one of the cars I liked a lot that I didn't I didn't know you owned till I till not, someone comment on it. Uh, it's not the taxi, the air cooled Beetles, right? No, but I didn't even know you had a taxi of air-cooled Beetles. That's cool on its own. I'm doing a VW video soon too, yeah. to talking about the history of VW. And my friend uh, Logan, she has a she has a, a Beetle as well. Nice. Um, so I didn't I didn't mean to say that I had a taxi of Beetles. I meant like I had or either the taxi or my Beetles that I used to have. Oh, okay, no okay, there. okay. I've seen the taxi. I've seen the taxi you had, uh, but I didn't see the Beetles you've had. I had. I went out to here actually in Vaughn area, like next to the mill area, I guess, Vaughn Mills. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah, I bought a 1971 standard Beetle. Standard is in um, like the suspension that was on it, not the transmission. Yeah. And uh, the car was sitting for like a decade and I basically called CAA and told them that, hey man, I just drove here and the car won't start. I need a tow home. Yeah. And this was, this was years ago. I don't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, whatever, like worked on that thing quite a bit, found out it was a big basket case yeah and then eventually i had a 74 super beetle that was like fully resprayed oh, built engine like beautiful. nice transmission everything was completely redone on it you could drive yeah. that car like a modern car and uh 
and I sold that because I thought I was losing my winter parking area. So I was uh, like, I'll just make it easy and get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Parking situations are tough when you have multiple cars. It I know It can that. be. It can be. Luckily, I'm in a spot now where I can have a few cars kicking around. Okay, that's good. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how long I'm able to rent this place. <laughs> Um, and then, so you had your Beatles and then you had your taxi, yeah. right? What was your taxi? Tell us, tell everyone about it. That was a 2008, um, Ford Crown Victoria. It was a New York city yellow cab and it was here in Ontario cause it used to be on the show suits. <gasps> oh, okay. Yeah. It was, it was a screen car. Um, it still had the rear partition in it. It still had, so those cars have rear dedicated AC. Yes. Uh, which is pretty neat. Taxi meter still worked. Oh my um, gosh. so I just buffed the paint a lot because it was a single stage did it spray. did it still have like the the like new york taxi decals on it yeah oh my god but they were really they, they were peeled pretty bad so the yeah. car started out in like the whatever the decals were for like the late 2000s yeah and then eventually new york changed those decals to a different style so the movie studio just haphazardly threw on a different set of decals but on you can still see the fade of where the old stickers were yeah so i went to uh, a place in waterloo and had all the stickers completely remade for it like exactly the way they were so yeah. it'd be updated and nice and uh rock that around for a summer oh that's awesome man yeah. where, where did that go where did that end up going do you know there's a guy out here somewhere he drives i don't know if you've ever seen uh ford crown vicks going around and they look like police cars but instead of police they say painting no i haven't actually so he, he he's the one that he bought, bought it. it yeah interesting so i guess he, he runs a painting company and then he's got another crown vic with like 20 or 30,000 kilometers on it. He bought it off the original owner. He's a huge Crown Vic, like a Panther body guy. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. I sold it to him and then he went to New York and actually went to the place where they do all the advertisements and he had like an updated, um, like an ad a carrier. A sign and everything. Oh my like, gosh. I think the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie or something. So like the sign uh, is actually kind of 3D. That's that's quite cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow. The taxi's pretty cool. The yeah. taxi's pretty cool. Went to a good home. Yeah, that's good. That That's what matters. And then after that, that taxi... I sold that taxi because it was a great cruiser car, but I wanted to drive the piss out of something. So yeah, the, the taxi wasn't much for that. Sure, it had uh, what what engine? Like it was a V eight. It was four. a four point six, pretty gutless, like maybe two hundred horsepower. But yeah. those cars are body on frame. They weigh like forty five hundred pounds. And and the benefit of it is just reliability. They just go and go and go if I'm yeah. not wrong, right? Yeah, that's a big thing. That's why you had the Mercury Marauders, you had the Police Crown Vicks, yep. you had the Taxi Crown Vicks, and then you had the Lincoln Town Cars that were based on the same platform. And yeah. They they just lasted forever. They right? had their like minor issues, which are kind of expensive to fix. Like what platform doesn't have their issues? I think like exhaust manifold yeah. gaskets, which are annoying because you got to lift the engine. Up. Yes, yes, yes. And then rear mains go pretty good. The transmissions go too, but you can get a free. You can do a free transmission like a shift kit in those cars, and it saves the transmissions. Yeah, yeah. There's always little hacks for every little yeah. thing. Yeah. So, okay, and then so yeah, I sold that because I wanted to drive a track car. My buddy Jay. He just bought a Miata, and he's been trying to get one for like a year or two. He, yeah. He's been in the Mark IV scene. And I'm like, nah, I don't want a Miata, dude. Like, they're cool, but I, I just can't, I can't imagine owning one as much <laughs> as I like them. Yeah. And so five hours later, I bought one. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me a, I was just looking through the, the Facebook marketplace. Yeah. And I was like, nothing, nothing, nothing. My budget was like less than six grand. And this orange car popped up. It looks like a time attack spec car. Yeah. For like four five grand i think i'm like perfect i messaged the guy i'm like i'll call you like give me your phone number yeah and that put me ahead of everybody else messaging him because the car was only posted for so cheap yeah so uh i go pick it up he's like hey man just letting you know this car is rotten like it's 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 good for yeah. parts and it was really good for parts like i used a lot of that car in my new car right now oh I, frick you don't even have to tell me because cody how many times have i messaged you thinking about some of the parts you post like your your roll cage i was thinking of buying yep. um what else um you have a style bar too um, i had a style bar yep. yeah 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 you had a style bar i was thinking um and then something else i wanted to buy off you oh man so I've had you had so, many, so parts. many parts you had yeah. so many parts for it which is crazy right yeah um but like so so I, I i go to pick the car up or like to go to look at it and uh, he just keeps talking himself down on the price. Yeah. And he's like, we're talking about the car. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, no problem, man. Like, I, I'll do like four grand. I'm like, yeah, okay, no problem. I'll pay four. I would have paid the five. Yeah. And then we keep talking and such. And then at, at the end of the conversation, after like an hour, he's like, yeah, you know what? Like, I, I can't let it go for any less than three grand. I was like, so you're, you, you take three then? He's like, yeah. 
Okay. Done. No Done problem. Deal. The coilovers and the Sparco seats alone were worth were, that. Yes, yes. And it was a fully running driving 1.8 in it, right? One, it's a, a factory 1.8 car, Uh huh. but he had a supercharged 1.6 kicking around. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So he put the short nose 1.6 into it. Oh, and I think it had nose. a Jackson Racing supercharger on it, not when I bought it, but the engine built for boost. Yeah. And and uh, so that's what you currently own, yes? <laughs> Well, well, okay. Yeah. We can we can get into the topic of what you currently own because you, <laughs> you do have a Miata right now. Um, but I was waiting for another car. But oh in between there, you've had another another two few cars. Did you? Didn't you? I've, oh yeah, I had a lifted Volkswagen Beetle, like a new Beetle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why couldn't I think of that, man? Yes. Yeah, your your new Beetle. That's that's the one I like the most. I'd say. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe not like the most, but. I just, when I saw someone post it for sale after you owned it, yep. um, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I saw in the comments that, oh, this is uh, Cody's old car. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. So. I had, it was a 2002 Beetle ALH TDI. Mm-hmm. And I had basically the engine and trans and the suspension swapped out of my other lifted TDI because I had a Jetta for a while. Okay. But I wanted a new Beetle because I wanted like a hatchback and I figured it'd be yeah. cool, like a, like a Dune Beetle kind of look. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it was a, if we're talking about like tunes, is a stage four tune. So like 180 wheel horsepower, 350 torque. Uh, I think a three inch lift on it, 29 inch all trains. Yeah, it looked pretty cool. It, it was, pretty it was cool. a fun car. And you had a livery on it, didn't you? Or did, or is not it the person? This one. No, not this one. They, not this one. Yeah. What do well, you mean not this one? I had, my Jetta TDI had a DOS parts livery down oh, all over it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. But this Beetle... Uh, when I sold it, the new owner put a golf oil livery on it, like a yes. full thing. Kind of like the, the RWB golf uh, yeah. livery that I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he did that to it, but man, I do miss that car. If I could buy it back, I probably would. I think you were you mentioned that to me when I asked you about it because I messaged you. I'm like, dude, I didn't know you owned this. And you're like, oh, I'd buy it back. But he's he's asking too much. He was asking. He was. Yeah. He had it up for 11500 11, was what he initially posted it for. And then uh, you you sold it for way less, right? I sold it for seventy nine hundred bucks without a roof rack and without the all trains and widened steelies, but now his price is down to eight. Wow! So like, so. if I had the money, I would happily just go up to him and be like, "Here's your loan back or my loan back, whoever, yeah. who's ever. I want my like, I want my car back." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then plus, like, basically, I'm only paying an extra hundred bucks compared to what we sold and bought it for, but I get a full wrap now if yes. I was able to buy it. Yeah, and that may, that's good. Just probably a whole chunk more kilometers driven on it and stuff. Probably. Or, kilometers never really bothered me. Especially on a TDI. Maintained. Yeah. Especially on a TDI, but yeah. no. Yeah, no, actually, those are pretty good numbers for a stage four because, um, like, at least torque-wise, because I'm stage four on my my uh, common rail TDI, CBEA, and I'm, like, 250 horsepower. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, a 390 torque. Yeah. So I'm only, like, 40 torque up from you, but, like, the horsepower difference is quite, quite... quite pretty dramatic. Yeah, yeah. That's where the common rails, like, they have more of that horsepower where, like, you know, the, the torque, I guess... I LH did, have, like, ridiculous amount of torque compared to horsepower numbers. Yes, yeah. So even mine, mine factory, uh, my CBA, because I had the, like, 08, 09 or whatever, like, yeah. the, 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 the CBA is in common. Um, they sold them here, the 150 horsepower um, and 250 torque. So Sounds about right, yeah. Also, yeah. if it helps, my GTD was a CBEA. Yeah, the CBEA. Everyone's like, "Oh, they have the cam issue or this or that." I never, I never ran into that. Was I never it the high fuel pump issue that they go with or something. They just start yeah, grinding them up. Yeah, the high pressure fuel pump was a known thing, but like, I wasn't too worried about that because like. Um, I put additives in and then some Same. people said don't put additives because just let it run like on normal diesel or stuff like that. I religiously I, ran additives in mine. Yeah. Every tank. I yeah. never let it go past a uh, quarter tank just to make sure that the high pressure pump would be okay and it, it was perfect. Yeah, I always filled up at quarter tanks exactly the same and I, I always put additives and stuff into it. Um, the only time I like, I did a like, uh, I wanted to see how much, how many kilometers I could get on a tank yeah. after my tune. So that's the only time I drove from basically Wawa, like Sault Ste. Marie, yep. more further than Sault Ste. Marie, all the way back down to Toronto and drove around for a week. I got 1,240 while I was at the pump, oh. right? And it still said I had like 80, 90 kilometers of range. But oh I didn't, didn't want to run it fully dry Yeah, uh, just because of the high-pressure fuel pump issue. I didn't want it sucking up junk at the bottom of my yep. tank, right? 
Um, but yeah, the ALH, the lifted, th- I thought that was super cool. And I was like, dude, Cody's a cool guy since he owned that. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, my car is to find my personality. People think I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think all, all car enthusiasts kind of have, I think it's not the, the car, but it's the type of car you have. It definitely helps. Like it, that kind of personality that you, that you have is kind of, it kind of speaks in your car. Yeah. And, and like to, to say like, I'm big TDI guy. I like those weird, like people, when people saw Beetle TDIs, they're like, Ooh. And I'm like, I love them because <laughs> you own one. I was like, that guy's probably my friend now. So, and that's I never how- looked at him twice for a while. Honestly, I was yeah. like new Beatles. Like, yeah, okay. I guess they're all right. And then I seen him, I started to see them like on Google and such like lowered yeah. with like the 18 inch uh, BBS RC wheels that the uh, GLIs come with yeah. and such. And I'm like, they can actually look pretty freaking nice. Yes. So, so that's where, that's where I was like, that that's pretty cool. I think, I think, uh, well, no, what solidified that I was like, Cody's going to be my friend is when you said the, the golf TDI, that was, that was, that was the, the, the GTD converted one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's go, let's continue. So you sold that. And what do you have after that? You just focus on the Miata in that case? Oh, after you man. sold that? Yeah. So the, that beetle which i totally forgot about and then i think i bought the taxi and then the miata so oh, okay orange miata i drove that around for a season i tracked it i only had to put brake pads on it that's not bad it, the car was a really good runner and the engine was rebuilt like not even two years ago so it leaks zero fluids it runs like a top uh it had limited slip all this kind of stuff so what 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 is the current setup in it because it, it it's a one six but without the supercharger yeah or, okay so it's on a stock ecu which i'm sure doesn't help it and it's on a built 1.6 i think it's got i, I don't know a, a shop called dave's garage built yes. the engine but he yeah. doesn't even remember that he built the engine so he can't even tell me the specs on it hmm interesting so, that's always interesting yeah because he's it, how did he say it? he's like i don't remember it but probably is that kind of what he said or he's like just no i don't know this car uh probably the second uh, the, the first one yeah he's, he's like, like yeah, i don't i probably could have but i know the previous owner of the car didn't lie to me because yeah. he straight up told me and sold me the car for three grand he has no yeah. reason to lie uh and the engine is definitely built like i've had the valve cover and such off of it and it has a thing called the x intake mod okay which we can get into but you could see that it's definitely been freshened up and mm-hmm. the engine uh runs a little bit different than stock yeah it's a little bit more peppy but okay. i'm sure with an ecu reflash i got a mega squirt at home i don't know how to use I'm, I'm sure if i took advantage of that i'd see something out of a naturally aspirated build i guess i guess i'll have to, to test drive your car and see the difference and maybe you'll test drive mine and, and see how like uh, a, a barn fine miata feels yeah uh, i think we were standing outside i have a picture I'll, I'll send it over to tony and we were comparing our cars and it's just like cody's is like you can tell it's like um um I'll put it this way. I hope you don't take take uh, offense to the way I'm going to say it. It's like, it. It's like uh, you know, Ricer Miata? Yeah. It's like Ricer Miata's car and mine. It's like teenage Ricer yep. versus like a grandpa that just pulled out his Miata, right? He signed my steering wheel. Oh yeah, 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 did he? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I, I, Rudnick's a cool guy. So yeah. I'm like, but, but like, you can tell that your car looks like something Rudnick would drive. Hundred yeah. percent. I it's think just, we can agree. I, yeah, I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. I just made the car to where like, I don't. I'm glad the car is not perfect. Like I said, I, I drove that white GTD yeah. and I was like, I'm a, I'm a detailer. So everything, I notice everything. Yeah. And I, I was more happy driving cars that were imperfect cosmetically because you wouldn't notice it. And I, I'm, I, I just drive the car. I yeah. still wash it and I'll wax it. I'll ceramic it and such. But like, I'm not going to lose Not to that extent. No, I'm the same way because it wasn't until I bought a daily. So I bought my sister a car. I bought my sister an Infinity. Yep. And like I got so many things like re- retouched, repainted, and fixed up on it. And then I was driving somewhere and I lightly tapped a bumper against a bumper. Mm. Um, the lady like literally got in her car, drove away. And I was like, okay. I thought we would at least talk. And I went outside <laughs> and I had a little scrape. And I was like, okay. And I went on with my day. Right. Whereas if that happened in my Jetta, Oh, dude, I'd probably be crying. I'd probably be yelling. I'd probably be chasing the woman down. Yeah. But I was in the Infinity, and I was like, I think I can buff that. I buffed it, and you can see, like, one or two small scratches. And I was like, eh. And then, like, my sister probably doesn't even know, so she doesn't even, like... Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where if you are walking past it, you'll never know. No, you won't even you notice know, it. you you're just always going to know. And that's the thing. I like having it because I get in it, drive it, call it a day. So yep. it's good having a daily, but... Similar for me kind of i got a 92 suburban for a daily oh there you go it's like lowered uh six five drop i think is what they're called oh my god <laughs> i don't know too much about domestics but uh yeah that that thing is not like perfect with the paint but i still try to keep it nice and if something happens to it i'm just like whatever man yeah not that's kind of the deal. way that's kind of the better way to hold it so 
Um, yeah, and then what you ended up doing with your Miata, uh, because you said it was rusted, so so technically yeah. it's the same Miata, but it's not. It's same, different, yeah. So that orange car that I had, I knew was rotten, but still drove amazing, so I ran with it, and then I bought a hard top for like $900. Oh my God. And so I tried to slam the hard top on it, and it wouldn't fit. The windshield was like way out of whack compared to the oh hard my top, gosh. so the frames twisted, and I'm just like... I was going to rock this for a few years maybe yeah. and just enjoy it. But I was like, no, I got to, I got to get something else. So I ended up picking up. So that was a factory 1.8 96 Miata mm-hmm. factory limited slip and all that kind of stuff. I picked up a 1990 with almost as much rust in the floors at least, but the rockers and quarters are solid and the hard top fits. Yeah. So yeah, that car, I just had the floors replaced on it and some frame rail work done, but I've swapped over coilovers engine uh sway bars are going into it soon i picked up a different roll bar that's a bolt-in compared to a weld-in yes 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 I, i'm kind in. of the same way i wanted yeah. uh i saw yours for sale and i was like i don't want to weld on that i want something reversible right yep. so same boat here not as hard to install as i thought it would be the the really the, like the hardest part is cutting <laughs> you just got to measure if you're really good at measuring your cutting is going to be totally fine yeah don't do like i do but just the cutting part, and then it's just like four bolt holes or whatever, depending on your bar, and they're pretty yeah. easily accessible. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's worth it to not get smushed like a pancake if I roll the car. That's my big thing. Like, I don't drive mine that much. Like, yeah. I've done not even a thousand kilometers on my Miata since I've owned it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I, it hasn't been a year. So it's not not that I've done a lot of like driving in it, but uh, it's also like I don't really take it on the highway if I don't need to and stuff like that because I'd rather, you know, like not get in that situation. And I want a roll bar, so it's in plans. Uh, I was talking with a guy named Jesse and and I think we'll be putting in a roll bar and a bash bar in the front and back. All right. Um, just so honestly, like he, he's, he wants to fabricate them for drifting, uh, but he just wants a clean, un, like unmolested example. And I was like, my Miata's I got you, a car. Uh, low mileage, never winter driven, yep. really good shaped car. Mine's the perfect one because he doesn't want to take someone that's already been in a collision and it yeah. could be a little bit off and stuff like that. And I was like, I have a low mileage Miata that's never going to be drifted, but I'll gladly put these, you know, like like safety parts on it. So um, And like yeah. with bash bars and such, because I'd imagine you just unbolt the factory crash bar yes. and then these ones just bolt right over Exactly. It. Okay, yeah. So I guess as long as the what is it like just old japanese cars like the rust from the inside out so as long as those bolts just don't snap off as you're taking them off for some reason my my bolts are beautiful i'm I'm so jealous never winter driven car i've broken so many bolts i I know the feeling i know the (laughs) feeling i was taking my miata apart and like i was doing it on a live yeah and some guy literally jumped on the live and he's like huh have fun dealing with the rust and then i was like oh it's it's never winter driven uh like even though i'm in canada and then the dude just like f you and like left the chat (laughs) and i was like i think i hit a soft spot you try to get one up on me but i've already been up because i got no rust yeah that's amazing I, i have a tiny little spot because the previous owner she hit something like a, a like um so a card or something an accident um no 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 a ding okay yeah, yeah, yeah i'll show you it outside yeah it's it's like a it's a little ding and just for a like it's not like like when i saw it i was like oh man this is gonna rust soon and he's like oh that happened seven years ago and i was like <laughs> oh yeah that's not a lot of corrosion for seven years so because it's never been winter driven yeah, right it turns out cars just don't rust if you don't submit them to like a ridiculous amount of salt, salt and, and other stuff yeah because i bought a few parts from my car off of a crashed ninety thousand kilometer car yeah and the engine looked like it was a crate motor yeah like it's all crazy. of the all of the fittings everything looked brand new and the rear the entire rear subframe out of that car minus the coilovers is out of that car yeah the bushings are still immaculate yeah, you it's still crazy. Eat off the paint, off that thing, like it was nuts. The car was T-boned. It was a factory AC, factory power window. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, I saw that one get posted. So it's crazy. It's sad to see. But yeah, a lot of Miatas have been getting crashed lately, which yeah. is sad to see. But you know, that's why like people ask me, it's like, oh, what are you gonna do with yours? You're gonna build yours? You're gonna drift car it? Blah blah blah. Because people know I like sliding and stuff like that. Yep. And I'm like, you know what? No, like this is this is this is a car not meant for that. And, and there's like, a lot of cheap Miatas still. You can get cheap Miatas out there if you want to do that. I'll be honest. If I'm going to drift a car or something like that, like a Miata, I'm going to go for an NB. Yeah. Like, like nothing against the NA, but just like... NBs are just better. Like, from that perspective, they're cheap, like cheap, like cheaper than NA, yeah. basically. They are cheaper than NAs. You have the 1.8. Uh, 
a lot of them have LSDs already. Yes. And the parts are just cheaper. Because like if I hit the front or tap the front and I know that uh, if anything gets misaligned in the front, the motors for the headlights go, go wacko, yep. right? I don't have to deal with that with the NB. It just I just pop it on, shove them in like the headlights and call it a day. Um, so that's the reality. If I'm going to drift something, it'll be a NB, not an NA. Um, I was thinking of picking up that green Miata to do like a track drift car oh, build. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Neil for that parts out Miatas, he bought it off me and he's like, oh yeah, actually, I, after I got the car home and I was pulling off the trailer, he put his like hand under the car and there was a hole. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, and he's like, yeah, I was going to do this for my girlfriend, but I'm probably going to have to part it out or that something. So. Yeah, because I went over to buy some stuff. He's like, yo, my girlfriend wants me to like make her this automatic red Miata and then just like build it for her and build it and like make it a, a driving car, I guess. Yeah. And I was like, I guess that green one didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I also will say that when I said that the NB is just a better car, I mean like the nostalgia for the NA because of the headlights is yes. there and they, I'd like the way they look a lot more. But mechanically, the NA is all around just a better car. Like, it has better suspension geometry. It has, it has a better engine. You can get an opt- optional six-speed. The NB, you mean. And NB. Wow, did I mix that up? Yes. And, and Sorry, the NB. NB has a better suspension is, setup. Everything's better engine, mechanically yeah. than an NA. My bad. Yeah. Uh, but, man, I can't get out of an NA. Like, they just, I just like the I love the so look much. of the NAs as well. And, and that just, I see them. I like them. And... I won't say, like, I drive the NA, mm. and I have older people seeing and giving me a thumbs up. Yep. I have young kids. And the worst thing I feel like driving the NA is I have kids run up to me, and they're like, do the winking. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's not a fa-. They're like, no, it's a factory option. You can do the winking. I'm like, it's, it's not. They didn't think of this in the 90s, guys. Come on. You can get away. With, there's, like, a certain kind of uh But apparently tempo. it messes up the motor, too, or the relay. It can if you just do it all the time. All the yeah. time. So I'd I'd rather not. Yeah, I know. I see I see you're we're having a potential I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna fix it. Oh, Cody's Cody's gonna fix it. Oh, are you tightening or are you loosening? Loosening? I'm first? gonna get it back on the table. <laughs> uh this is the fun part of co- podcast. Last time it fell I don't know why. I I have a different mount on mine. And I think we should just continue using that mount. I'm half wondering, because your mount, you're pulling straight off the table towards you, but this one's sitting sideways, and I'm pulling it towards me. No, so. I think, I think I know we're off topic here, but I think this mount is the better mount. It might the, be. The, the, the cone-shaped one. Oh, okay, I see what, oh, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I that's a little bit different one. Anyways, back to back to, <laughs> back to the topic. Yeah, and, and that's what we have uh, outside, and I guess that's your current car setup. So. Yeah, I but, don't know what I drive more, the Miata or the Suburban. I think... I like driving suburban, like mobbing around in, a, in an early '90s. Like everything is just red in that truck, <laughs> and you just cruise down the road is fun. But like hopping in the Miata, you get the high, high revs, and you're just yeah. cruising down. It's so good. It is it launching is. through the gears, and you're not really hurting nobody because the car is not fast. And and you know what? It's a perfect, how can I say, combo that you have because you have the. You have the big car for when you need to transport Miata yep. parts, and then you have the Miata for actually enjoying. And uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good setup. So uh, w- I guess you're not done swapping everything between the Miatas or? There's like minor stuff. Mechanically, the car is pretty well Sorted. swapped over. Um, I still got to do the sway bars, but I, I need to, f- I don't know what brand they are. So I'm trying to like figure out what diameter they are to buy universal bushings of Whatever bushings are, are all, I thought you were going to say end links you need, but I guess the end links are, end swap links are over. the same, yeah. Okay, but the actual good. bushings themselves. So I just need to swap those over. And then honestly, like the vent window part that just throws air in your face from the corner window. Ah, oh, okay. But okay. other than that, it's pretty well the orange car. Yeah, I that's did good. have to sell the rear end out of it because I couldn't get the diff off the subframe. Ah, uh, Because okay. that power plant beam would just did not want to come off. Oh, my God. So I sold the whole rear subframe and ended up buying a, uh, what is it, the torsion limited slip which is not the torsion yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I ended up buying one of those for like 300 bucks no then you're talking about the vlst vlc is what you want right no torsion is torsen? what you want okay my bad see look at me mixing stuff up so, so you have a vlsd or you got a torsion uh i got i got the worst one in it right now a vlsd yes yeah okay so yeah, i bought yeah, a yeah. vlsd for like 300 bucks and jammed it in, and it works pretty good. Yeah. So uh, my plan is, um, I'll see. My deal with Neil was that if he does part that car out, I get first dibs on that torsen diff in it. Nice. In the in that little green one eight. I thought he so. has one for sale right now, still for like a whole. He kit. does, 
But my deal with him is a special price deal. Yeah. Uh, because he wouldn't, no one would know that that green car existed. Yeah. Except that I told him that existed. All so right. because of that, I have a I have a deal for to get it a little bit cheaper. Um, and I want it out of that car because yeah. I've driven it. I know it works. No, like it's it's on me at that point. Just pull it out and give it to me if he parts it out. So he's yeah. still deciding what to do because he's he's trying to mishmatch some cars right now. He's got a lot going on. Um. Yeah. So we'll figure that out. But. Yeah, so we have Cody's whole history of cars. We know what his favorite car is now. Uh, yeah. We know what he regrets selling. <laughs> um, and I think we'll go from there. I guess maybe we'll have Cody in another video, either comparing our Miatas or doing other kind That'd of Miata fun. stuff. Yeah. Um, or, you know, maybe we'll go over to, to Cody's shop one day and uh, we'll do something there. But yeah. uh, thank you so much for being on the parts and uh Thank pistons. you for having me, sir. <laughs> I think this is the first time we did a proper handshake like that, but uh, I'm old fashioned. Old fashioned is good. Uh, thank you for being on, and uh, we're gonna go drive some Miatas. So uh, oh, maybe yeah. maybe we'll clip, uh, include a clip of that or link to something with podcast that. Podcast was fun, but the real fun the real fun begins in the parking lot. Uh, it it does indeed, and we have a fresh parking lot out back. So thank you so much for tuning in. Episode 13 completed. We will see you in the next one next week. Don't forget, merch is available at partsavatar.ca. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm wearing it. We'll, we'll, we'll probably try to uh, hook uh, Cody up with some good stuff. And, I'm down uh, to support local brands. Exactly. So we'll go from there. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Remember, Parts Avatar has got your back. So don't forget to subscribe to the Parts Avatar channel so you don't miss any of these exciting videos.